nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. So check it out. About a week ago, I asked you guys over on the community portion of my page to let me know some of your most commonly asked graffiti questions, or just questions you had on the mind about graffiti. And you guys hit me with a plethora, a wide range of commonly asked questions in graffiti. So today, we're gonna be running through all those questions, and if you feel you have any additional questions that you would like to leave, you can do that in the comments down below. I'm really active in my comments, so I'll probably answer it. First one comes to us from Sick1. And Sick One wants to know why characters in graffiti pieces shouldn't be the main focus, and why is color theory so important to learn? Alright, so you really could actually have a character as the main focus in graffiti, that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just more so a matter of how you plan out your image, and do you plan for the character to take the spotlight? If the answer is no, you don't plan for the character to take the spotlight, yet the character ends up taking the spotlight, then your image is going to look a little bit weird. This gets into the topic visual weight, which we covered somewhere on the cards if you'd like to go and check out that video. But yeah, other than that, you totally could have a character take the main focus. However, a lot of people don't just because we're doing graffiti. Graffiti tends to be the focus, and as a result, you really wouldn't want a character to, to take away from that. That's like, for example, if you're doing a portrait of somebody and they happen to be standing in front of a field, you still have a landscape in the back, but the landscape isn't the focus. The people are. So if the landscape is grabbing everyone's attention, that's a bit of a problem. It's the same thing with that instance. Pistol says he's gotten, what name do I pick? More times than he knows, and you know what, I gotta agree with you. Look, I have a video that explains how to pick a name in graffiti and like the do's and don'ts of a name. I highly recommend, if you guys are having trouble with a name, definitely watch that video, but some quick recap tips here. Don't ever change your name because it's hard, that's ridiculous. Every name is gonna come with its challenges. That's the kind of the beauty of graffiti, right? It's like you have to learn the ins and the outs of your name. Back when I was a kid and I was doing graffiti, I talked to literal graffiti legends. And these people would sit me down and they would teach me, and they would straight up tell me to my face that the name Grimm cannot flow. Now, of course, we know that's not true. Like, flow is line and letter uniformity and similarity. But this is one of the obstacles that I had to come over myself and every single name is going to give you those same obstacles, right? So if you change your name because it's hard, no other name is gonna be easier. They're all still going to be very hard because there's different obstacles with each name. I don't know what to name myself. <laughs> Fitting for the last question we had. Please, I don't know how to make like the big 3D with the colors in the 3D. They're in most pieces and wild styles. All right, so to answer this question, I actually have a video talking about this specifically. I highly recommend you watch it. It actually comes with a free ebook book as well that you can download. Once again, the ebook is free. I highly recommend that. If you get both of those, you won't have any questions about graffiti after that. Still Trippin' says, How do I get a stylized on my tags and pieces? Keep it simple, practice the basics. Keep it simple, practice the basics. Keep it simple, practice the basics. Honestly, when a new artist in any art form goes on the journey of trying to find style, they're immediately going the wrong direction. And every step they take is 10 steps back instead of 10 steps forward. If you're actively pursuing style, then the chances are you are practicing incorrectly and you're making learning take decades longer than it should. The first thing we need to understand about style is style is just the exaggeration of the fundamentals. That's all it is in any art form. Doesn't matter what art form you do. That's what style factually is. So if you want to add style to something, you first have to have a firm understanding of the fundamentals. That way you can exaggerate those fundamentals to add style. Without the knowledge of those fundamentals, you will not be able to add style. Your style will always fail because your foundation is not set in stone. It's the equivalent of baking a really crappy cake and then putting a cherry on top. Nobody cares about the cherry if your cake is still crap. And I don't know what to name myself. Also asked how do I improve my pieces? Basic print font, straight letters, and hairstyles. Work on that and you'll be fine. Toaster says... Real question, why are some anti-style people toxic? I don't think it's really specific to anti-style, I think it's more so just graffiti in general. I've met a lot of really kind, very very sweet graffiti artists in my time, but the majority of the graffiti artists I met in person, especially online, tends to be pretty toxic. I thought this question was really interesting from Johan, and he asked, why is it always toys that call other people toys? And the answer to that is simple. The Dunning-Kruger effect. I love this topic because, and what the Dunning-Kruger effect states is the person in question is too incompetent to realize their own incompetence. They don't have the knowledge of the thing they're talking about to realize how little they know. There's actually a graph for the Dunning-Kruger effect that maps the confidence levels based on, you know, the Dunning-Kruger effect. And essentially, 
When you're a novice, your confidence is really high because you don't understand how much more information you still have to learn. So as a result, you think you know everything. But then it drastically shoots down really quickly. And this is the phase where you end up realizing how much more information is out there, and as a result, you can now see the scope of everything you don't understand. And then your confidence starts to go back up as you kind of master and learn all of that information that you previously did not know. And why do graffiti artists hate street art? This whole entire street art versus graffiti thing really got expanded once we got to like Robbo versus Banksy. Once that happened, graffiti artists felt an allegiance, an obligation to take his side by default. And this immediately meant that all street art was bad. From my experience from talking to many street artists, once again both in person and online, it seems like they're a lot more accepting of graffiti than graffiti is of street art, right? A lot of street artists really love graffiti. But the ones who do dislike graffiti, oftentimes they dislike it because of the same Banksy versus Robbo thing. Anyway guys, thank you very much for the question. I really do appreciate it. If I wasn't able to get to your question, or if you have additional questions, feel free to leave them down below. I try to get back to as many as I possibly can. And if you're new here, check it out. We have by far the most credible information you can find online about graffiti. So if you want to join the smartest graffiti community, subscribe, stick around for a while. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.